The world is rapidly changing. Nations are perplexed at unprecedented events and conditions. They seek the truth. What about you? Stay tuned to the episode of The Cleaver of Truth to discover what is God's last message to the world. And now, join your host, Dr. Justin Erasmus and Miracle Chogogudza in their quest to find out what is the great cleaver of truth. Mr. Chogogudza, are you doing good, my brother? Hey, God is still good. I'm still alive. I'm breathing. Mm. God is still good. How are you doing? Yeah, God is still on his throne, so I'm doing very well, thank you. Um, I had, uh, did you have a good week? Um, there was ups and downs, but like I said, God has been good. I'm still here, I'm still breathing, so no complaints. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it has been a challenging week uh, for me personally, but I'm, I'm glad to almost see the end of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, and looking forward to... The Sabbath coming up. Um, it is especially just to in, it is especially in weeks like these hectic weeks where you cannot just wait for the mm. Sabbath to come. Mm. Absolutely. Um, shall we begin? Yeah. Will you please pray for us? Let's close our eyes. Gracious, loving Father, we'd like to thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity that you have granted us. To again dive into your word dear lord as we're going to be opening the scriptures dear father our own wisdom is nothing dear lord so we're asking for your wisdom please open up our minds help us to understand what you have what your spirit has to say to us dear lord please lead and guide this discussion in jesus name i pray amen 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 so just to recap on um, last week, uh, last week we dealt with this angel um, that is flying in the midst of heaven and, that's ha- and that has the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth and to every nation, tribe, kindred, um, every nation, tribe, tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. I got a little bit mixed up there between the King James Version and the and the New King James Version. Um, so we dealt mostly on the characteristics of this message um, in context of this angel proclaiming um uh, this message and we listed a couple of points surrounding that uh, one thing that we did not um, highlight which we will then highlight in this episode is this concept of the everlasting gospel now this may seem like a trivial question what is the gospel or an easy question but i think it's very important that we unpack this concept um mm. Because it is at the root or it is at the heart of Revelation 14. At the yeah. heart of these three angels. Um, and it is, it is it, 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 it's the everlasting gospel. So yeah. I, I think it's important to take a look at this. And to, to begin our, our little discussion, um, we will look at, uh, we have to, first look at the origins of human history so Mm. let's consider adam and eve uh, for some context yeah so in adam and eve we find that they were created holy they were created innocent they were created just they were created righteous Mm. and it is god who himself made them righteous and holy and Mm. innocent um after the fall well before the fall um genesis chapter 2 Uh, Verse 25 says that they were both naked and they were not Mm. ashamed, referring Mm. to Adam and Eve. And then in uh, chapter 3, we see that after sin, they now realize that they were naked. Mm. So it it, it begs the question then, what's going on here? Were they naked before? But they're only realizing that they were naked now. Mm. But if, if we study the scriptures, we find that Adam and Eve were not naked um 
they were naked, but they had a robe of light surrounding them. Mm. And that robe of light symbolized the righteousness um, or the obedience to the law, yeah. which was given to them um, by Christ. So they had every inclination to uh, do that which is good, to obey the law, in other words. And when they were sinned, they were then derobed or disrobed, uh, and they were left naked. And that naked, that literal nakedness, symbolized unrighteousness or, mm. or guilt or disobedient to the law. Mm. And we find that this law demands a perfect life. If you do not offer a perfect life, then the consequences is death, as we see in Romans 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. Mm. Right, so as a consequence um, of disobeying, we find in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, it reads, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, uh, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now I want to read something uh, concerning this verse. In the book, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 60, paragraph 2, it reads, the warning given to our first parents in the day that thou eatest thereof shalt in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Genesis 2 verse 17. Did not imply that they were to die on the very day when they partook of the forbidden fruit. But on that day the irrevocable sentence would be pronounced. Immortality was promised them on condition of obedience. By transgression, they would forfeit eternal life. That very day, they would be doomed to death. Mm. Um, so just something interesting uh, surrounding that sentence, in the day that you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. Um, and we, we see throughout the Bible that um, Jesus speaks to individuals and he tells them um, that in me you will find life. Mm. Um, uh, um, John 3 verse 16 says um, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So throughout the Bible, God speaks to people um, telling them that they can have life but they are already living. So it means that when the Bible refers to life, um, in some cases, it's not referring to existence merely, but everlasting life. And mm. in this case, we see that the life which is being referred to here is that of everlasting life. So in the day that you've eaten thereof, you have forfeited uh, that eternal life. And that very day, you would be doomed to death. Mm. Um, so just in light of what you mentioned now of the robe, right? Um when they were first clothed with the robe, it was Christ's righteousness. And when sin entered, now we are told that in Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, that it is sin that has separated us from God. So now mm -hmm. just in light with the accusation of the last church of Revelation 3, we are told that um, because you say that you are rich, increase with goods, and you don't know that you are um, naked and you are blind, Right, so you don't know that you are naked, meaning that you don't know that you are full of sin, thinking mm. that you are so perfect, but you don't know that your life is full of sin, hence you don't have this robe. And mm. then mm. also in Revelation 16, verse 15, Jesus tells us that, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth mm. his garments, lest he walk naked. naked. So it's like, once God is saying, yeah, blessed is he who is living a righteous life, right? Because once you remove sin out of your life, you are clothed with Christ's righteousness. So he's saying, so Christ is saying that he's coming as a thief. Keep your garments on. Continue doing these good works, these righteous works, lest sin enters in your life and you lose this righteous garment. Mm. So, yeah, the righteousness is like... Um, the robe sin removes the robe and once you remove sin from mm. your life you can get this robe again um yeah it was just an interesting thought mm. um and then so this the reason why adam and eve did not die 
the same day that there's sin was because God had the plan before Adam and Eve was even created, right? Mm. It was not an afterthought. I mean, I can imagine God busy creating Lucifer right there, knowing exactly what Lucifer is going to do. Mm. Yet because God loves his creatures to have freedom of choice, he allows everything to happen. It's like it's our choice to do this. So he knew that sin is going to enter into the world at a certain point. Hence, a plan was made before the world was even created. Um, mm. That is very interesting. Um, but now this plan needed two, like it, it, it had two parts to it, or it needed two mm. items to it. It needed a perfect lamb, right? And then mm. that lamb also had to die, right? Mm. So Jesus had laid this plan way before sin even entered the world. So it was not a surprise to him when um, Adam and Eve fell, right? It was just time for him to mm -hmm. execute that plan, which was a very difficult um it was it was very difficult for for God the Father and the angels to actually allow this to take place. You know, when Jesus went to his Father and was like, "Yeah, I have to do this now," and it was a very difficult. And even the angels did not understand. Even Satan himself didn't understand why Jesus would come and die for this wicked race. Right? I think it's desire of ages that tells us that his wicked heart could not comprehend that sacrifice that he came to do. You know. In 1 Peter 1 verse 18 to 20, it says that knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of a lamb without blemish and without spot, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of of the world but was manifested in these times for you so now here this verse is telling us that all those two factors to this plan were met in jesus jesus was that perfect lamb without spot or blem blemish and then he mm. was also he, he also died as that perfect lamb so there the two points were met the, what was required was the perfect lamb and the death of a perfect lamb and then this plan was also way before the world was even created. So, mm. yeah. So, so then we see in, in Genesis 3, verse 7, Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and mm. they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. It's interesting that the eyes were now opened. Um, and um, in... Um, in, in Genesis chapter 3 as well, uh, the serpent suggests the ideas that you shall be like gods, knowing good and evil. Um, mm. In other words, they, he, the serpent insinuates that you are blind. You are giving mm. blind service to the Lord. Um, your eyes can be opened and you can be like God and mm. you can know good and evil. And in the fall then, as a consequence of of Adam and Eve um, adhering or listening um, or as a consequence of Adam and Eve disobeying, they then try to cover themselves with fig leaves. Mm. And when they hear God in the garden, um, they then attempt to cover themselves, mm. right? So God effectively then says, um, by God's action, by by sending a propitiation, by sending a savior into the world, God effectively says, "You cannot cover your nakedness yourself, mm. no matter how much you try. There's mm. nothing that you can do." In the same way that um, God made them holy, it was up for God to redeem them. Mm. So there was nothing that they could do. So now we see the first ever sermon on the gospel 
preached mm. in Genesis mm. chapter 3 verse 15. Mm. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your heel and you shall bruise his uh, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So the question then is how can all of this be accomplished? So mm. as you've mentioned a, a perfect lamb um, died or or had to die and this was uh, this was a type of Christ and it was illustrated in the lamb that died that very day um, that would provide the garments that mm. would cover their nakedness. Now this was of course uh, physically done. This was a, a type of the actual covering of the righteousness of Christ. Mm. So we see that in that very moment when um, eternal life was forfeited and the punishment um, was um, instituted now because there had been a transgression of the law. In that very moment, Christ then stands up and he says, let the penalty fall on me. And Mm. in that very moment, he stands between the law and between humanity, Mm. between the penalty of the law and the transgressor of the law. Genesis chapter 3 verse 21, also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin Mm. and clothed them. Right? Genesis chapter 22 verse 8 says, Abraham had said, um, oh, Genesis chapter chapter 22 verse 8 says, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. And in that, um, in that passage of scripture, we see a substitution taking place, mm. right? Where your your filthy garments are exchanged for the righteous robe of Christ. Mm. So, well, like the verse that explains this very nicely to what you just said now, is Romans eight verse three. It says. Because you mentioned something like Christ stood between us and the law, right? Mm -hmm. Romans 8 verse 3 says that for what the law could not do Mm. in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So Christ took our sinful flesh and he gave us his righteousness. He became sin mm, mm, so that we mm, might become mm. his righteousness. Yeah. And then Isaac is now saying, or oh, Abraham is saying, God will provide himself. Like everything was left to him. He was the only one that could redeem us. Mm, mm. Mm. So now this this whole plan that had been um, laid out since the foundation of the world was now when in Genesis three fifteen and when when Adam and sin when Adam and Eve sinned right a lamb was slaughtered now there was a type like you said of how it was pointing to Christ being that perfect sinless lamb that was going to come and die for us so now if you look through the whole um through the whole Old Testament, they're following this this um, this system. Um, so it, it, we're actually told that um, the whole Jewish economy was centered around this. Right? This was the everything, and all this what it all this had to do was just keep in constant memory of the people that one day a lamb is going to come and is going to make the great sacrifice and all these things are going to fall away so it was basically a system that were to keep um it was a system that had to for foretell of yeah what was going to happen the great sacrifice now this needed a priest without blemish as well right it was so it was a lamb without blemish and a priest without blemish as well if you mm. look in Leviticus 21 verse Leviticus 21 verse 17 to 21 says speak to Aaron saying no man of your descendants is in succeeding generation who has 
any defect may approach to offer the bread of his God. For any man who has a defect shall not approach a man blind or lame who has a marred face or any limb too long, a man who has a broken foot or broken mm. hand or is hunchback or dwarf or man who has defect in his ear, in his eye or eczema or scab or is a eunuch. No man of the descendants of Aaron, the priest, who has a defect shall come near to offer the offerings made by fire to the Lord. He has a defect. He shall not come near to offer the bread of his God. Mm. And then Leviticus 22 verse 22 verse 22 also says that um, a perfect victim also had to be thinking to be offered, right? The perfect lamb, the perfect priest. It says that whatever has a defect, you shall not offer for it shall not be acceptable on your behalf. And whosoever offers a sacrifice of peace offering to the Lord to fulfill his vow, a free will offering from the cattle or sheep, it must be perfect to it must be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no defect in it. Those that are blind or broken or maimed or have ulcer or eczema scab, you shall not offer to the Lord, nor make an offering by fire of them on the altar to the Lord. Thus mm. an unblemished priest offered an unblemished sacrifice. Wow. Right? So mm. it needed a perfect lamb. It needed a perfect priest. Simply because Jesus was going to come and be this perfect lamb and this perfect priest. So if you are to offer a defective lamb, you are going to come, you, are, you are basically saying that Jesus was going to come and sin. Or Jesus was going to come with defects of which we are told that Jesus was a perfect mm. sacrifice. Right? So all these things were just for um foretelling Jesus. Right? Now, what we need to understand, and this is what the Jews failed to understand, they thought that these things in and of itself could remove sin. Right? They thought that, that their salvation was in the sacrificed lamb. Hebrews 10 verse 4 does not say that. It says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Right? These things were just, it had to exercise their faith in the coming Redeemer that was going to do the real thing. These things were just to keep a constant, fresh thought in their minds to realize that the Redeemer is soon coming to redeem us. Yeah. I and think hence, that. Uh, hence, yes. I, I, I think it's. Can you imagine being a someone who is physically at that sacrificial system mm. and placing your hands over the head of that sacrifice mm. and slaughtering that sacrifice? Like it must have been so real, so so mm. raw. I mean, to to see this innocent uh you know, this innocent sacrifice just mm. perish as a result of your doing. Yes. Oh. And I just want to latch on to what you said previously. Um, I want to read a, a quote from The Desire of Ages, that beautiful book, um, mm. page 25, paragraph 2. Christ was treated as we deserve, that we mm. might be treated as he deserves. Yes. He was condemned for our sins, in which he had no share, that we might be justified by his righteousness, in which mm. we had no share. He mm. suffered the death which was ours, that we might receive the life which was his. With mm. his stripes we are healed. And this mm. is the gospel gift. This is the gift, the gift of Christ, who created all things, who came and lived a perfect life and died uh, mm. the death that we should die. And by this gift of living and dying, he would then weave a perfect robe of righteousness mm that would cover our nakedness. So in these two things, um, the perfect life, uh, the perfect life that he lived, that the law demands, and the death that he died, that the law demands, we find 
the gospel gift. So mm. as you've said, Jesus was the unblemished priest. Hebrews 4 verse 15 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but mm. was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. sin. Hebrews yeah. 7 verse 26, For such a high priest was fitting for us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. Mm. At the same time, Jesus was also the unblemished victim. First Peter 1 verse 18 to 19 says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things mm. like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. Verse 19, But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish or without spot. Mm. Um, there can be no forgiveness of sins without, there can be no remission of sins without the shedding of blood. Right? So in these two, his life and his death, he offered for the whole world. The book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 2 says, And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. That famous verse, John 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. Mm. Isaiah 53 verse 6 says, And we like sheep have gone astray. Mm. We have turned everyone to his own way. The Bible says there is not one righteous, no, not mm. one. Isaiah 53 verse 6 goes on to say, And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The iniquity of us all. Galatians 3 verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Mm. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Mm. Now, we must make this very clear mm. that the gospel is a record of what God has done outside of us. Yeah. In other words, it the gospel itself in and of itself does not hinge upon what we do or don't do. It is what God has done in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Mm. So in the same way, um, I think we touched on this a little bit last week, but I will definitely touch on it moving forward, is that we, we played no role in our creation. Mm. Similarly, we play no role in our redemption. Yes. It is Christ who done the work. It is Christ who made Adam and Eve holy. It is Christ who wrote uh, the law of God upon the heart of man. And therefore, Adam and Eve had every inclination to obey uh, God's law. And it is God who made them holy. And at the same time, it is God who... Um, who redeems us, who, who sanctifies us, who makes mm. us holy again. It is Christ and Christ alone through which God reconciles the world unto himself. So just to make that very clear that it is Christ and Christ alone, not I, but Christ. Paul says, for I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I love yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It is all about Christ. And in this, we find the beauty of atonement. Mm. Now, that word atonement, I'm not sure if, if our listeners know that it was William Tyndale who coined the word atonement. Mm. And it's actually, it's made up of um, three words, or I should say maybe two words. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's made up of at one mint. Mm. Uh, that's where it is to be. I'm at one with Christ. So at one mint, putting it together, atonement, mm. such a beautiful word. And just, just to br briefly elaborate on that word, it means that two parties were estranged from each other because one of them offends the other eventually reconcile to each other. Mm. It usually contains two stages. The offenders act of expiation for forgiveness uh, from the offended party and the reconciliation which is regained state of unity thereafter so beautiful um and this this atonement really this this 
self-sacrificing love of God is what sets a Protestant Christianity apart from all other faiths. Mm. Um, just to to sort of elaborate on that just slightly, um, if I may, um, in in the faith of Islam, I'm reading from, I want to quote from islamreligion.com. Mm. It says, since God is almighty, he doesn't need the charade concocted by Christians in order to forgive man. Mm. In the Quran, God says we are all created in a state of goodness. He has not burdened man with any original sin, having forgiven Adam and Eve, he has forgiven us. We are all personally responsible for our actions. There is no need for a humanly concocted savior in Islam. Salvation comes from God alone. Yeah. Now, the atonement is blatantly and clearly denied in Islam. Mm. The other facet of, of this passage is that man is inherently, and when he is born, he is born free of sin. What does the Bible tell us about the human heart in its sinful state? We've mm. just, or oh, I've just referred to a, a, a verse that says, There is none righteous, no, not one. The heart is wicked, who can know it? Mm. Um, another, another quote from this website. Um, has stamped them with their disbelief for their saying, we killed God's messenger, Christ Jesus, the son of Mary. They neither killed him nor crucified him, even though it seemed so to them. Mm. So in Islam, the atonement is uh, openly denied. Now, what about Catholicism? You know, you've mentioned um in the previous weeks about the unity of of different faiths coming together, yeah. uniting yeah. Uh, on issues, current issues in the world and trying to find solutions. Um, can two walk together lest they agree, miracle? Amen. Amen. So we see that Islam publicly denies the atonement. Now in Catholicism, if you read the their doctrines, the catechisms, their theology, you will find that they mention the resurrection of Christ, they mention his ascension, they mention his death, they mention his perfect life. But in actual fact, if one studies their theology, they actually deny the atonement. Mm. Um, and if you know anything about the treasury of the of the Catholic Church, in Catholicism, which contains the merits of Christ as well as the praise and the good works of Mary and all the saints, in fact, effectively then you can get by without the death of Christ. Mm. Um, it is viewed as something that was not essential, but just to appease the anger or the anger of of, of the Father. Mm. Uh, so I, I'm asking my Protestant brethren, how can we unite with these faiths on issues of the gospel. Mm. Um, furthermore, you have prominent leaders. Um, the Archbishop uh, Desmond Tutu goes on record to say that uh, when you look at the resurrection and the ascension of Christ, that it is language that is being used figuratively. And yeah. he says that that even uh, the the resurrection of Christ was not the revivication of a corpse. Mm. Can you believe that? Mm. Yeah, and these are prominent men. Prominent, highly prominent, highly prominent figures. Um, now, Martin Luther, in response to, to um, a push or a desire for unity, says, peace, if possible, but truth yeah. at, at all, all costs. costs. Yeah. Mm. So you see that with these religions um, uniting, um, they're all compromising, right? Mm. Because Rome does not change, right? It's, if you read Revelation 13 carefully, you see that Rome clearly does not change. The Rome mm. in the Dark Ages is still the Rome today. And once it gains again that civil power, and that mm. religious power, it persecutes, right? So 
these religions are blatantly denying this mm. this 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 gift and mm. i don't like i don't know what is there to deny you know because this is just a gift you know and what it took it took the king of the universe to kai and die to come and die for us mere worthless human beings made out of dust you know um so in Christ doing this he gave us a gift all we have to do is to accept that gift you know like we must just take the mm. gift you know we you're must claim f- it yeah mm. you're not being forced you're not it's just claim the gift it's yours i've given you a gift you know um like the last part of Romans 6 verse 23 says but the gift of god is eternal mm. life through jesus christ so this gift is eternal life that's what i don't understand sometimes is you are you are given a choice whether you want to enjoy this life for a season like this life is temporary or accept this gift which is eternal life and we're just throwing this gift away like it's 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 it, it doesn't have weight on it you know if i can make an example of what christ did mm-hmm. for us um it's like i uh, let's say i'm a very rich man right <laughs> this is an example i'm not rich <laughs> but let's say i was a rich man yeah and you are poor my brother <laughs> you are very poor <laughs> <laughs> all right okay let's say there was a very rich man <laughs> <laughs> And this man loved you so much Justin he loved you so much mm, that mm. he bought you that Lamborghini that you wanted like you wanted this Lamborghini mm, so badly mm. and he loves you so much and you know what we usually do when we love someone we, we we are ready to do anything for them so he buys you this Lamborghini and then he says Justin I have something for you something that you're mm. going to love so much mm. go to such and such a location and open this garage and mm. take what you mm. see there mm. right now in 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 a normal circumstance you're supposed to be excited sure and before you can even hang up the call you there already that's <laughs> in the normal circumstance that's what's supposed to happen mm. but if we look at this in the context of this is what Christ has done for us Christ has given up his life for our lives, right? Mm. By law we are supposed to be condemned to die. But Christ loved us so much that he was willing to give up his life so that we mm. could have eternal life. And we are not willing to go and open or we are not willing to go to the location where we can find this this this, mm. this Lamborghini that we are promised. Mm, you know? Mm, mm. It's like we just we just moving on with our lives as if someone didn't just offer us something that we really want you know we are just throwing it back in his face or let me make mm-hmm. another example i make a very very nice meal for you justin i make cuz i love you so much and i make this nice meal for you and <laughs> i surprise you you didn't know that i'm doing this for you i surprise you um you come to my place and you sit down i serve you and this is your favorite meal i know what your favorite meal so i do this for you out of love now mm. w- what is driving me to do this is i want to see the reaction on your face the smile that mm. you're going to have uh, is just is priceless so i'm doing this out of love because i know this is also fulfilling my like it's it's, it's fulfilling me as a person mm. so you come and you sit down and i surprise you surprise yes dinner for mm. you and you just look at me you look at the dinner you walk out of my house and you leave how am i how am i supposed to feel sure so that's probably going to shatter yeah. my heart mm. you know cuz first of all i'll be confused like okay why are you not this is your favorite meal and why are you not you know what i'm saying anything mm. this is exactly like exactly how it is with christ you know he has given us everything he has given us his life for free and we just look at it and like no man i, I i'm not mm. interested we are mm. not claiming that gift that he has given us and this is breaking his heart 
Um, and and you, I know you've, um, I know that was hypothetical, but you've never made me food, so now I know that you don't really love me, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's my favorite food, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> moving <laughs> on. <laughs> so, this gift is not for a specific group. It's not for Christians. This gift is not for a certain religion. Even the Catholics that, or like the Catholic system that says that the atonement never happened, this gift is for them as well. Even the mm. Islamic mm. system that says that the mm. atonement was not, it's for them as well. The, oh, Bible says in, the Bible says in John 3 verse 16 that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We are denying everlasting life. And the Bible plainly tells mm. us that this life is a temporary life. This is not even the life. This life is just a preparation for the actual life that we are supposed to live. Mm. You know, In Matthew 26, verse 27 and 28, it says that, Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink Drink from it, all of you, for this is my, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many, mm. for the remissions of sin, right? So Jesus died for everyone. He died to remove each and everyone's sin. He died to give us His righteousness. Each and every mm. person on this planet. This is a very much, this is a very inclusive gospel. It's not mm. a, it's inclusive. Anyone that wants to come, you can come. And then we see in Acts 2 verse 38, Peter says that, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive mm. the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right? Mm. Acts 5 verse 30 and 31 says, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God mm. has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Mm. Acts 10 verse 43 says, To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. And then I'll just mm. read again Hebrews 7 verse 25, the one, the one we just read. Therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession mm. for them mm. like, let me just make one thing clear here you have not gone too far for Jesus to not accept you mm. like I was I was listening to a sermon in the week and the brother was stressing a point he was saying that Jesus delights to forgive like it's his nature to forgive. He wants you to come to him and ask for forgiveness because he delights in doing this. He's not selfish with forgiveness. It is the like, glory of God to forgive sinners. Yes, like this is his nature because this was like, we cannot, we cannot comprehend the love that Christ has for us, you know. And we are told that the only way we can clearly see or to clearly um try and fathom this love is we have to look at his sacrifice we have to look to the cross and we can truly see what our sin has done to jesus christ and then that um a, an awakening of his love would be kindled will be kindled in our hearts without looking at the cross we, we, we won't really see and understand his love you know um, we are told in Desire of Ages, uh, I think it's page 83, it says that it will be well for us to contemplate the life of Jesus. It will, it will be well for us to spend a thoughtful hour, yes, in contemplation of the life of Jesus. We need to take it point by point and let the imagination grasp every scene, right? By thus doing our confidence in him, shall be strengthened and uh, and is going to renew a deep love for him you know this is the only way we can see that great sacrifice that christ has done for us and it is for us and once we see this we can boldly go to christ because we're seeing our need for him and we can claim that gift 
and say no lord thank you so much for this gift i'm claiming it mm. and, and on and on that note it is that love that awakens the love in us to mm. obey for Christ mm. says if he love me keep my commandments keep my so not only does the gospel save us from the penalty of sin but it also saves us from the power of sin mm. and i titus 2 verse 11 uh, says for the grace of god that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching mm. us um just like uh, teaching us that denying ungodliness worldly lusts we should live soberly righteously and godly in the present age mm. verse 13 looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great god and savior jesus christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works left any man, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand uh, that we should walk in them now james chapter 2 verse 14 reads what does it profit my brethren if someone says he has faith but does not have works Mm. now miracle you drive a nice bucky as we say here in south africa Mm. right Uh, and the buck is rear wheel if i'm not mistaken right Mm. it's rear wheel so let's say your rear wheels are your faith and your front wheels are your works now when you start your ignition and you you start driving which set of wheels move first your rear rear wheel or your front wheel (laughs) do Mm. your rear wheels move first yeah are you sure my brother (laughs) (laughs) i don't know (laughs) <laughs> uh, okay, I would like to suggest to you, my brother, that <laughs> they all move at the same time. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a trick <laughs> question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not trying to catch you out. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> now, 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 <laughs> now you're showing the people that I'm not very familiar with cars. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all move at the same time. Um, Practically, you know, they uh, they all move at the same time. Although yeah. I think what you are alluding to is that they are driven by the rear wheels. Yeah. Uh, that is that is where the um, the power, for yeah. lack of better word, is is where it comes from. Mm. So, um, although so that is the the relationship between works and faith. Um, it is the faith that drives the works, um, but the works cannot. Uh, be manifested without the faith the faith Mm. in christ for it is the works of christ in me right christ is without me he can do nothing Mm. um so the gospel the gift of the gospel does not only save us from the condemnation or the penalty of sin but as well as the power Mm. hey that is that is powerful and many a time what you see is this is very um usual in the christian world many claim to believe in jesus christ they claim the gospel they claim the eternal life right that's their faith they have faith in the word of god but then Mm. their actions are contrary to their profession you know it's like they're only taking one arm of the gospel and they're leaving out the other Mm. you know um yes we are saved by grace through faith but then without works, you cannot um, go without it. Because I think James even goes deeper by saying, show me your works mm. and I will show you mm. my faith. Mm. Right? Not, like either, either or, if I have the one and you have the other, we both are not living up to the standard. You need your works or your faith need to be showed by your works. Right? So I don't say um, to someone who's angry on the street, may God bless you, Jesus loves you, Ah, may God bless all your needs, and then I go home. That is not how it's done. You bless this person's needs, he's angry, feed him. 
so mm. that he can ask you wait why are you feeding then you, then you can give him and say no Jesus loves you and he will free, freely accept the gospel right so um, it's it's faith and works together like you're saying um so in revelation 14 we are shown or we are pointed to what Jesus did on the cross for us right and it also calls upon us to fear God and to give him glory mm. because of what he did for us you know so you're not just fearing God and giving him glory for something you don't understand mm. it's like you're understanding that he has sacrificed his life for me hence he is my redeemer he is my lord and savior so i should fear him and we said that this fear is mm. not a scare it's not you being scared of god this is you adoring god and reverencing him and lo- loving him and worshiping him right and we'll especially we'll deal with that more on the we'll deal with that more in the next episode yeah when we focus on the fear of god and especially in light of the judgment the gospel comes very handy because in the judgment basically what's taking place in the judgment is seeing that if like seeing are you perfect or not so once you accept the gospel what happens is christ clothes you because now there's there's two stages of salvation at the moment right or it's actually three but we are in the second phase right so we have justification sanctification and the glorification process so it's like when you're justified that is you accepting christ right so you go to christ you are justified right you are in christ that is you being justified and then when you're sanctified is christ in you now this is the problem that each and everyone face right because no one can jump to glorification before he is mm-hmm. sanctified you know sanctification is christ in you now the bible says that behold i stand at the door and knock if any man hears my voice and open the door i will come in and sup with him and he with me so jesus wants that intimate relationship with us right but it that cannot happen if we still have sin in our lives right hence they say that sanctification is not a daily is, is, is not a once off process that's justification you just you accept christ as your personal savior you are justified finished you don't have to go through that process again you accepted him you baptized and you that's that now you get in this process of sanctification where your works now must now show that you've been with christ or christ is with you that's a process of sanctification and it's a lifetime process it does not end every day you need to sanctify yourself remember paul says he dies daily you need to die every day and light and let christ live in you so now the way we do this is now preaching that gospel now right showing what jesus has done in our lives and saying the everlasting gospel to preach to everyone that dwells on the earth and then once this gospel is preached then only the end will come mm. Mm. so then oh man the gospel is yeah it's just it's mind-blowing um and it is this gospel that fills our heart with unparalleled joy it is this gospel that gives us that fills us with hope it it just it fills us with adoration for the savior in um, Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 to 10, it reads, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, people, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Luke 15 verse 4 to 6 What man of you having a hundred sheep if he Mm. loses one of them does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it and when he has found it 
he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing and when he comes home he calls together his friends and neighbors saying to them rejoice with me for i have found my sheep which was lost this is the gospel this is the good news mm. so i and think with that or you can say your final remarks and then with that i think we can close off mm. like i just like this um sort of hundred sheep notice that when the when, when the lost sheep comes back or when he finds a lost sheep he does not condemn it the first mm. is not is not saying where were you why did mm. you go there what mm. were you doing there you know like it's just love you know mm. it's just love it's remind me of john 3 verse 17 it says that for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved so the gospel is not to condemn us because many people i don't know maybe it's the way some christians live out their lives that chase people away but this is an inclusive it's a gospel of love you know it's a gospel that tries to show you that you are you, you are going the wrong way look at what jesus did for you and it will draw you back to the right to the right direction and unfortunately many of us are living our lives careless of what Jesus did for us and it's breaking his heart each and every day not being not not caring about the sacrifice or the gift that is given to us but again I'll say in light of the lost sheep when you come back to Christ his arms are open wide and he's ready to receive you again and he will not condemn you he will not condemn you. Um, yeah. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to say thank you that we can study your word. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice in sending your Son to die for a fallen race, Lord. You emptied heaven. You placed heaven at risk. And you withheld back nothing. May we have the mind of Christ in us, Lord. Mm. Who, being in the form of God, Lord, thought it not robbery. Or, or Lord, being in the form of God, thought it, he, he, he emptied himself, Lord, and, and died even the death of the cross. Father, we say thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Thank you, Father, for your love. Lord, I pray, my God, that your, your mercies might fill our hearts, Father God, and lead us, my Lord, to do the good works of Christ. Father, I pray, Lord, that you might cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for that marvelous, that unmatched, unparalleled love, Lord. Thank you for that sacrifice, my Father. I pray, Lord, that you might be with us uh, through the rest of the week. Thank you, Lord, once again, that we can uh, study your word and talk about these things. I pray, Lord, that we might apply to our lives. For these things we ask in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust that you were blessed by today's talk. Please do share with your friends and family and subscribe so that you don't miss a new episode.